Can dead spirits communicate with living people? Did they return to their houses to haunt them? The belief in ghosts is very common, and movies such as Ghostbusters, cartoons such as Casper the Friendly Ghost, and haunted houses at exhibitions and Halloween have perpetuated the idea that the dead can come back to haunt us and speak to us. Mediums and psychics also claim to communicate to our loved ones. The worship of ancestors is common in many cultures, and the New Age movement claims communion with the spirit beings. In biblical times, King Saul consulted with the witch of Endor and supposedly communicated with Samuel, who had been dead for some time. Can the dead really communicate with the living? How do we explain the apparent communications with the dead that is commonplace in many modern religious movements of the past and the present? The scripture says that the dead know nothing, Ecclesiastes 9.5, and that upon death the thoughts perish, Psalms 146.4. As the cloud disappears and vanishes away, so he who goes down to the grave shall not come up. He shall never return to his house, nor shall his place know him any more. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Far from being a conscious state, death is the ultimate state of non-being or unconsciousness and is described as such in the scriptures. For in death there is no remembrance of you. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. So man lieth down, and raiseth not, till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Humans lie in the sleep of death until the resurrection at the end of time, then and only then will we awake and be raised out of what David called the sleep of death. Many religions teach that the human soul is immortal and only the physical body actually dies. They see death as the transition from one state of consciousness to another. According to this doctrine, the soul is a separate entity that only resides in the body of the living. However, the text of Genesis 2 verse 7 clearly states that God breathed into the formed man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. He did not receive a living soul, he became one. The New King James Bible states, man became a living being. Of the Bible's 1700 references to the soul and the spirit, neither the soul or spirit is ever declared to be immortal or eternal. In fact, 1 Timothy tells us that only God is immortal. The doctrine of the immortality of the soul is full of false hopes and negates the message of death. If humans continue to live, albeit in an altered state, then there is no need for the atoning death of Christ. Christ died to restore life to those who had forfeited it through sin. In Eden, God said that Adam and Eve would die if they ate the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, Genesis 2 verse 17. God did not say, your body will die and you will enter a new state of consciousness. It was the serpent who lied to Eve saying, you will not die. The idea that your soul is immortal is a lie that originated in Eden to convince us that we are immortal like God. We are not immortal, but it's true that we were never meant to die. Death entered the world as a consequence of sin. Only when Adam and Eve chose to ignore God's good plan and chose death did it become. A reality. When someone dies, their spirit or breath of life returns to God 
Ecclesiastes 12 verse 7. God takes back the life, ruach, spirit, breath, that he granted on condition of obedience, and the person ceases to live. When God said that humans will surely die if we transgressed his requirements, Genesis 2.17, he meant that we would cease to live and would return to dust. So if the dead are asleep, as the Bible says, who are these spirits that apparently communicate with us? If the spirits that are called up by mediums or channels are not the spirits of the dead, then they must be the spirits of demons who try to deceive us and rob us of salvation. There are numerous examples in the Bible of both angels and demons working on earth. The modern spiritism movement began in 1848 when the Fox sisters experienced a mysterious rapping in their farmhouse in Hinesville, New York. From these humble beginnings, spiritism has grown into a worldwide movement, with its modern thrust concentrated in the New Age movement. Even early spiritism leaders admitted that their communication was with Satan himself. Spriten, a Norwegian spirits periodical, says, Spiritism is the serpent in paradise offering man to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Moses Hall, an early spirit lecturer, made the following statement. A truthful snake. In answer to the question, who then are we to believe, God or Satan? I answer, the facts in every case in the Bible justify us in believing Satan. He has ever been truthful. That is more than can be said of the other one. It was not the devil, but God who made the mistake in the Garden of Eden. It was God, and not the devil, who was a murderer from the beginning. These blasphemous statements reveal the true nature of spiritism. God denounced the consulting of mediums or communication with the dead in several places in the Bible. God has clearly defined the way in which he communicates to us. He communicates through his inspired word, the scriptures, and through his prophets, Revelation 19.10. Nowhere in the Bible does it mention that we are to communicate with our loved ones as a means to obtain information, knowledge, or inspiration. The Bible teaches that the dead are asleep, awaiting Christ's voice at his coming, instead of watching the pain and suffering of their loved ones. They are peacefully sleeping, unaware of what is happening on earth. Also, their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. If you want to know more about what the Bible has to say about death, life after death, hell, and much more, watch The Mystic Realm of Death on ADTV.watch.